and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a brief unboxing of a limited edition Seiko cocktail time. You saw from the thumbnail and the video title, it is the Tequila Sunset. I think this one is gonna be a bit of a polarizer. You lot are never backwards about coming forwards, telling me whether you like a watch or not, so please don't be shy, leave me a comment, let me know whether you're keen on this one or not. It's from their slightly smaller Seiko cocktail time range. I've already reviewed one of these. I reviewed the Negroni about 12 months ago, and I thought it was gorgeous. You catch these dials in the right light, and there is nothing quite like them, certainly not at the prices that they're charging. Now, I didn't just buy this one myself. It is kindly on loan to the channel from a subscriber up in Queensland called Marty. Marty has now loaned me five Seiko watches. He loaned me a veritable festival of Seiko fives, followed by his SPB 143, the ultimate Seiko diver, quite possibly. Big shout out to you, Marty. I'm always so grateful and so honored when people I haven't met send me their brand new watches that they haven't even worn. That means that we get to enjoy the vicarious thrills of sticker peeling as a group. Let's flip the camera and peel off some stickers. All right, let's get on with it. EB Games. Now that's Electronics Boutique. They're a high street gaming store here. Looks like Marty could be a bit of a gamer. Off topic for a moment. I know I'm late to this particular party, but I bought a used PlayStation 4 at the tail end of Sydney's million week lockdown and I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh my goodness, my mind is blown every time I switch that thing on. This is somebody who was playing 8-bits right the way through. I just can't believe what these games are capable of these days. Just amazing. Anyway, back to the watches, for now anyway. Seiko, what's in the box? Well, this is a Seiko SRPE47. If you buy it outside of Japan, it's the SARY169 if you buy it inside Japan. And as it says on the box, it is a limited edition. Not that limited though. Leave me a comment what you think about Seiko's limited edition policy. This is a limited run of 5,000. They came out last year, and the fact that Marty's buying one last week means that they haven't sold out clearly. Oh, there it is. It does look pretty special with that kind of salmon pink tequila sunset dial and two straps. So as is the way with Seiko's ever expanding cocktail time range, all of their watches are inspired in inverted commas by a specific cocktail. Here are the two that form part of a series. It's the Tequila Sunset and the Frozen Margarita. And because they're limited edition, they've given you two straps. They give you a mesh strap, which is apparently for daytime use, and a complementary leather strap, complementary in terms of the color, I'm sure it's not free, which is apparently for nighttime use. Rather specific suggestions, to be honest, including the kind of hotel ambient background. There is a Frozen Margarita available as well, in a blue color, again, mesh for the daytime, and the same colored strap, that kind of brown leather strap for the nighttime. And there it is, good news, Marty. It's not a DOA, the second hand has started ticking. Now, because I've only got this one for a day, basically, before I need to post it back up to him, I will slip in a little bit of macro just towards the end here. I think it's important to get this one outside in some natural light and show off that dial to the best of my abilities, because yeah, it's gorgeous. Let's show it off. Let's Let's peel off the stickers. And there it is, a very, very pretty watch indeed, this one. Very similar to the Negroni that I reviewed last year, but obviously with a different color on the dial. So how much did Marty pay for these? What is the going rate? Well, I had a look on eBay, about 600 USD. I think the retail price is a little bit over that. You can pick them up from Japan for about 500-ish. Uh, Marty's a smart shopper. He bought this one from a high street retailer in Australia on special. He got his for about 550 AUD. That comes in at about 430 USD. I reckon that is somewhere towards your target price. If they haven't sold out, then it can't really be that limited, can it? So yeah, don't pay retail for Seiko. Don't pay retail for anything. Great dimensions on this one, 38 and a half mil in diameter just under 12 mil thick with a 45 mil lug to lug and 20 mil lugs, 90 grams on the mesh. Definite unisex appeal this one, not just the color, but I think the size is very suitable for smaller wrists and therefore suitable for ladies' wrists, which do tend to be a little bit smaller, but yeah, 
That's not to say that gentlemen cannot get away with this size. I love a 38 and I have no problems at all wearing salmon pink. One more bonus sticker for us here, the case back sticker. So stainless steel construction, all high polish actually. There's no brushing anywhere on this one. We have domed hard legs on the front and this is a piece of flat hard legs covering the, the movement there, see-through display case back. And the movement, unsurprisingly, is a Seiko 4R. They're calling this one a 4R 35B with 23 joules rather than the 24 joule NH35 variant that we all know and love. Very attractive golden rotor on this one and limited edition, like I said. So this is, Marty's is number 1316 out of 5,000. Now I'm not suggesting therefore there are, there are still 3,500 of them in circulation. I guess the Aussie jeweler in question got an allocation somewhere in the 1300s, but yeah, plenty of these around if you like it as far as I can tell anyway. 50 meters of water resistance and a push-pull crown. It's a dressy watch. Don't take it in the pool. I wouldn't recommend it. So yes, indeed, let's have a look at this one outside under macro lens. It is just drop dead gorgeous. Interesting patterning on this dial. It does seem to be an etched dial, kind of guilloche patterning, very much in a mandala pattern. Now I know um, Second Hour Watches, the Australian brand, has really taken on this sacred geometry thing, including the mandala pattern. But yeah, this one, absolutely gorgeous. So a mixture of applied and printed. The presage and automatic above the Arabic at six, that's printed, as is the made in Japan down to the left of the six, because this is a Japanese model. Minute track around the outer edge also printed on. Everything else is applied. So Seiko logo is applied. Little truncated arrowhead batons at the evens also applied. Now, date complication. With a square frame, applied frame, white date wheel at the three, I think this watch would look better without a date complication, quite frankly. I know these are meant to be daily wear watches. They are dressier, but they are still meant to be dailies. A date's great for a daily, but I think a lot of people would sacrifice the, the lack of date for that clean look that you would get if they just put another one of those little truncated arrowhead indices there. Never mind, not much we can do about it now, is there? Lovely Dauphine handset, beveled down the middle, and a needle second hand with a diamond counterbalance. You can quite literally thread the eye of that needle as well. Looking across the watch, you can see how much distortion you get from that piece of domed hard lex crystal. Very, very pleasant effect. The whole thing just looks gorgeous. Nobody does dials quite like Seiko do. Certainly not at this price anyway. Time and time again, I say that, and time and time again, they prove that. So let's get it on wrist. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. Look at how gorgeous that thing is. Look at how dynamic the colors are when I move it around underneath my studio lights. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference. Really, I think a watch, you can get away with a smaller diameter dimension as long as it sticks with 20 mil lug width. That really helps balance it out overall. It's not a bad mesh either. Seiko just printed on there, but it is reasonably thick and does a good job of kind of balancing out the watch in terms of weight as well as in terms of wear. That's the overhead shot. Not too bad in terms of legibility, actually. A little bit surprising given the kind of silver on salmon. Not normally a great color combination. This one you can totally beef up by putting on that leather strap though. So let's have a look at the leather strap then. Dark brown from the photos and indeed dark brown in reality. Yeah, that will go far better with that dial color and also with the frozen margarita one than plain black would have. And a couple more stickers for us as a bonus. Well, there we are. Indeed, chocolate brown, very, very dark brown, in fact. And it's the typical kind of Seiko deployant here. And I'm guessing this one should be mounted back to front. So let's do that. There we are. That's it on the leather strap. Yeah, very nice, dark, dark chocolate brown. Really brings out the kind of pinky tones from the dial. And I think it will go beautifully with the frozen margarita version also. And in true Seiko style, I'm wearing it back to front, though if you don't fancy that, you can just reverse it. Definitely gonna take some breaking in. I'm gonna take this one off and leave Marty with that pleasurable experience. But yeah, nice that they include those two different options straight out of the box. I guess that's what it makes it a little bit special, plus the fact that it's got a limited number on the back. So thank you, Marty, for your continued generosity. I hope you wear this one in good health when it does land back on your doorstep in Queensland. Back to you lot watching, what do you think? As I said in the intro, I think this one is gonna be a bit of a polarizer because of the size. I think a lot of people don't want to go this small and also because of the color. And I guess because of the fact that these are now being branded as unisex watches. I know that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. The people who didn't buy Calvin Klein 1 when it was released back in the 1990s, I guess. 
DS. Me, personally, I've got no problem with the size. I've also got no problem with the color. I think it is such a pretty looking watch. Yeah, a gorgeous little thing. I would be happy to rock this one on my wrist. I would probably wear it on the leather strap, though I would persist with that one, break that one in. This mesh is a little bit thin. I think it really suits it tonally on the leather strap, and it also bulks it up a little bit. Plus, I have got a bunch of 20 mils that this thing would just eat for breakfast. It would look perfect. Leave me a comment. Let me me know what you think to this gorgeous little tequila sunset. So there you have it, well done, you're almost finished the video. What did you think of that one? On your potential shopping list or not? Please leave me a comment, let me know what you think. If you're a fan of the Cocktail Time series, you're not short of reviews on this channel, why not check out my review of the Negroni or the Espresso Martini. Thanks for watching, I'll see you